Welcome to the 2022 Stag Bowl. We are going to crown a champion tonight here in Division Three football. It's the two seed, Mount Union Raiders at 14-0, taking on the one seed. North Central Cardinals also at 14-0. Man, on the field early, you can tell these guys are fired up. Someone's going to be undefeated and take home some hardware tonight. Empty the tank. Let's do it tomorrow. Win or lose. This is the last time this group of men will be on the same field together. Fight for your brother. Fight for your teammate. Oh, yeah, I'm getting fired up here. Let's take a look at the bracket. Last week in the semifinals, Mount Union came from behind to get the win for North Central. They just ran all over the place, and that sets up the undefeated matchup. Mount Union taking on North Central. What's up, everybody? Welcome inside the booth here in Annapolis, Maryland, alongside my running back all season. He's Rini Angola, former Buffalo Bill. I'm John Tripp, and Cody Harvey will join us momentarily. All right, so if you talk about D3 Football National Championship, you got to start with Mount Union. 13-time national champions. They are glad to be back here. But, Rini, it was not an easy path this year. Yeah, I mean, this is their 22nd appearance in this game, and they almost didn't make it. Big comeback last week against Warburg. Now, they've had their share of blowouts this year, but they've had tight games, none closer than this. Braxton Plunk hits Edwin Reed there late. Tyler Echeverry gets that winning touchdown. But before that, there was a big fourth down conversion from Plunk to Wayne Ruby just to keep that drive alive. The comeback from behind win. Mountain Un Union is here once again. All right, let's talk about the one seed, North Central, and their quarterback, Luke Lanin. He has had an incredible gear. He's got the offense humming. A great athlete, right? Uh, 35 touchdowns against only six interceptions. Protects the football. He's smart. He spreads it around. He knows where his weapons are. And oh, by the way, he can hurt you with his feet, not only running the ball, but extending plays, keeping that head downfield. He's the type of quarterback that the defense has to know what he wants to do each and every play. You got to keep him in containment. He's a good one. Let's not forget about their running back. Ethan Greenfield, he was just awarded the Gallardi Trophy Award winner. That goes to the best player in all of Division Three football. Yeah, essentially the Heisman Trophy for Division Three. He's my type of running back. Three years in a row, he's led the country in rushing. Strong, great balance, great vision, not super flashy. Runs downhill. He's going to carry the ball a bunch tonight. Hard to bring down. Looking forward to watching Ethan Greenfield carry the ball tonight. For more on the North Central Cardinals, let's welcome in the third member of our crew, Coley Harvey. Coley, what's up, man? Hey, how you doing, John and Reedy? For the North Central Cardinals, all the talk going into last week's semifinal game was about exacting revenge. They got it, beating the defending national champion, Mary Harden Baylor. That's the same school that trounced the Cardinals in last year's national title game. For the head coach of North Central, Brad Spencer, he says that it's all about exacting even more revenge than just that. They want to not only get that revenge over Mary Harden Baylor that they got, but they want to get revenge over this stag bowl. He felt like his team embarrassed itself on our broadcast last year. Tonight, his Cardinals have a chance to get the sweetest revenge that there is, and that's winning a championship. Coley, appreciate that. Man, it was messy weather out here yesterday miserable <laughs> and rainy but it has cleared up 44 degrees here in annapolis maryland at the campus uh, the naval academy this is a beautiful setting couldn't be perfect for a d3 national championship beautiful night for football both these teams are ready to go mount union has won the toss they elected to first and north central will get the ball first elliot warner will boot things away Joe Sacco is the deep man who will return it for North Central. Gets the party started across the 20. A return of 16 yards to start off this national championship game. Coming out will be the star quarterback for North Central, Luke Lanin. You see the rushing numbers on the season. I mean, North Central, number one rushing offense in the country. Going up against the number one defense against the rush in the country. The proverbial something's got to give in this game tonight. We're about to find out. And here he is, the star we've been talking about, Luke Lanin. Yeah, again, very smart. He's a gym rat. He's constantly working. The type of quarterback you want running the show. First play of the game, Laney will keep it himself, trying to get to the edge. 
will not be able to get there, taken down by Jesse Vale just to gain a two. And Jesse Vale is one of their more experienced players on defense, a safety. Excellent speed, because, oh, by the way, Luke Lane is one of the fastest players on this North Central team. You know, they have those devices that, that, that tracks how fast you can go. Luke Lanen's been tracked at 22 miles an hour in the open field, so that goes to show you good angle there by Jesse Vale to make that tackle. Meet me. Yeah, that. <laughs> second and eight from the own 24. Handoff goes to Ethan Greenfield attacking that left side, and man, Talk about power and finishing a run. He gets those extra yards. Attacking is the word I would use. I, I said in the open, he's not flashy. He presses the line of scrimmage, okay? Bounces it, uses his vision, and then watch him get north and south. Great shoulder pad level there as he gets low and finishes the run. Beautiful. You are an old school running back. That, that, you played at UMass. You had every kind of record. You played with the Buffalo Bills. This is your guy. Well, and that's the style I ran with right there. So that's why I kind of get excited. No favorites, but I, I like his style. So eight and nine, Greenfield picks up the first down and will stay in the backfield. He gets another touch, cuts back over the middle, across the 35. Greenfield didn't look like much, but he still picked up four yards. Yeah, if he can go three down. or four on first down, that's, you know, staying ahead of the change. Now, I got to believe Coach Brad Spencer here. Couple early runs, couple early runs. Keep an eye on a vertical shot here. I think he's going to try to take a vertical shot against his second area of Mountain Union. Just kind of softening up a few body blows here early with some runs. Brad Spence, been a great conversation with yeah. him yesterday. First year as a head coach. He was an offensive coordinator when North Central won the national championship in 2019. This is his first year. He wants to win the national championship and create a powerhouse at North Central. Second and six. Laning. Keeping it himself, that whole left side is wide open. Tons of room to run across the 40. Bumped out of bounds by Derek Bailey. But you talked about the speed by Lane, and he showed it picking up 26. See, and that's the danger. So everything was flooded to the right side of the field. Good coverage by Mount Union, but nowhere to go for Lane. And he looks up, says, oh, I can take it around the left side. Showing you his speed. Four plays have all been on the ground to start this game for North Central. Number one rushing attack in the country, going up against the number one defense in Mount Union. First and ten for the Cardinals. Greenfield lowers his shoulder. Man, he just ran over Rossi Moore, was able to trip him up and trip him up enough to get three yards. Yeah, if you can finish off runs though like that, eventually what happens is as the game progresses, those DBs. Safeties, they don't, they don't like tangling with backs like that, right? Because it starts to hurt after a while, and that's when you break a tackle and that four-yard run turns into 40. I asked this coaching staff, what is it that makes Ethan Greenfield so good? They said his strength. That's what he does. He empowers his will over the defense. And a great work ethic, too. Second and seven. Lane looking to throw, scanning the field. Nobody open. Finally, downfield is Greenfield, and he's got Touchdown, North Central! A 34-yard touchdown strike, and the Cardinals are on the board first. And what protection up front, John? by that offensive line of North Central. Lehman had all day to throw, scan the field, and you know, the secondary of Mount Union can only cover for so long. Tanner Raines on to attempt the extra point. His kick is up and good. A 7-0 start. How about that opening drive by North Central? Yeah, I mean, phenomenal. Did most of it on the ground. You just look at the protection up front. That is great pass protection there. Lane is just scanning the field, and he finds Ethan Greenfield down that right sideline. Perfect air under the ball. Pitch and catch. Josh Jones, the corner. Didn't have a chance there as Greenfield got by him. And Lane and Schoen, you can do a little bit more than run. And oh, well, you think Greenfield can do a little bit more than just run as well as he can be a pass receiver. The opening drive, six plays, 78 yards over three minutes, 24 seconds. Greenfield, three rushes, 16 yards, and that reception yeah. TD, he said it, he showed it all. You know, and Coley talked about in the open how uh, Coach Brad Spencer said they were embarrassed on national TV on our network last year in this game. Well, Luke Lane 
threw three interceptions that game. He, he wants to get back and redeem himself well. I, I, I'd say give him an A-plus on that first drive already, running the ball and passing it. And it was interesting because Brad Stevens, Brad Spencer, excuse me, said, we want revenge. It has nothing to do with Mountain Dew. Correct. It's about us. He, he, was, our revenge. he was so complimentary of Mountain Union. And he said, listen, North Central, they look at what Mountain Union has done and it, you know, has done for so many years. That's what their program wants to be like. So Tanner Ames getting set to boot things away for North Central. Mountain Union getting their first touch of the football here in this championship game. Orion Finley will receive it at the 10 as a crease. And will return it to the 30-yard line, a gain of 21. And that'll bring out their starting quarterback for a perfect 14-0 Raiders, Braxton Plum. You know, captain of the team, coaches, both coaches for both quarterbacks, so they're both gym rats. Uh, look at these numbers. Over 4,300 yards passing, 48 TDs, and so on six interceptions. And that's 74% completion percentage. Very accurate. He's got a strong arm, can make all the throws. And by the way, he's got some really good wide receivers led by number six, Wayne Ruby. Tyler Echeverry will start in the backfield with Plum. Echeverry will roll out to the right. He will catch the screen pass. The defense is all over that one. So if you're wondering where DeAndre Parker is, he's the 1,200-yard rusher this year, 18 touchdowns. Hurt his foot, and so he's just, you know, he was kind of a game time, seeing if that foot could go. Looks looks like Echeverry obviously got the start here, and he showed up big last week in that semifinal game against Warburg. 111 total yards, 64 on the ground with that winning TD, and he caught six passes for 47 yards. So great job by Tyler Echeverry. Going to have to have a big game out of him again tonight. And he's a guy who's really been waiting in the wings all season. He showed up every single week in practice, and when his number was called, he delivered last week. Plunk on second and ten. He's going to be dropped for a sack. A loss of four. Tyler Rich, the man to bring him down. You know, talk to defensive coordinator Shane Deerking for, for North Central. And in my notes, he, he told us the defensive line must get to the quarterback. Right off the bat, he's pretty happy with it. It's a very experienced bunch up there. They do an excellent job. They're strong, they're fast, they get upfield and already making plays. First possession of the game for Mount Union. Find themselves in third and 14. And we have an early timeout. Today, it's a D3 official, David Berger, and replay official will be Jim Kokora. All right, Reedy, third and 14, an early timeout, first drive of the game. What are you dialing up here to calm your team down if you're Mountain Union? Well, you know, it's early in the game, so third and 14, obviously, not a great down in this is to pick it up. Something high percentage, maybe a little draw, maybe a little screen. See if you can pop something, a little wide receiver screen, maybe slam, slam pass to Wayne Ruby. See if you can break a tackle, pick up the first down. Just got to try to you know, calm down, take that deep breath. You just the one thing you can't do is make a mistake here on third 14. Can't turn the ball over. A punt is not the worst thing. So North Central showing pressure. They black up, they back off. Deep throw down the field is incomplete. Was looking for Wayne Ruby. Antoine Walker with the big quarterback was there in coverage. Yeah, and coaches told us Walker will be on Wayne Ruby when they're in zero coverage man-to-man -man all night. We talked about his size, 6'1", 200 pounds, Walker. That's the matchup tonight. He'll have Wayne Ruby. So the punt team comes on. Now Union. Three and out, minus four yards on their opening drive. Elliot Warner is the punter, gets the snap off the turf, and gets it away. Joseco will good return, good field position for North Central. Already with a 7-0 lead here in this championship game, we will see what a season it has been for North Central. The number one overall seed coming here into this Division Three championship game. A perfect 14-0 record. Really their toughest game of the season was October 1st against Wheaton. 33 to 20.
their defense has stepped up huge. And then their offense has taken advantage of it. Rini, they've really just blown by most of their opponents this year. Their average margin of victory, average margin of victory is 48 and a half points a game. It's crazy. They've outscored their opponents 758 to 79. That's how dominant they have been this year. Scored a touchdown on the opening drive. This is their second possession of the ball game, up 7 0. Take the handoff. Laney's going to keep it himself and will slide down. They're going to mark him down where he started his slide. So he gets a seven yard gain. Caleb Detellum credited with the tackle. Let's take a look at the school, school profile for North Central. When we talked to Brad Spence in his first year, he said, we want to develop All-American husbands, fathers, and teammates. And one thing that really stuck out to me was he said, we got to make sure they do the little things right yeah. so we can trust them with the big things. And he is all about paying attention to the details. And the three things they, they live by, be generous, resolute, and disciplined. 87, it's second and three. They give it to Greenfield. Trying to push the pile. Bond Factor was there on the stop, a gain of two. And one of those little things, which may seem little, but it really is a big thing, just how you take care of what your surroundings, right? He said, my locker room, I want it to be neat. We talk about coats, shoes, backpacks. I want everything lined up perfectly. Even in the classroom, he tells all of his football players, after class, I want you to stay late. I want you to clean up the, de the area, move the desks back, wipe off the whiteboard, and make sure your professors have an easy way. We want to make sure that football players are known as academic students as well. Third and one for North Central. They give it to their guy, Greenfield. Stood up, and he's going to be short. It was Von Factor again meeting him immediately. Yeah, and Von Factor, Duke Hill, those guys up front, they need push. Mount Union up there, they got it right there, but I believe here we go early on. Good versus good, fourth in less than a yard. North Central's gonna go for this here. Now you like this call early I do, on. I do. Th this is an attitude play for both teams, right? It's an attitude for the offensive line and, and Ethan Greenfield, because I believe he's gonna touch the ball here of saying, hey, we're gonna go get a yard. I don't care if they know where we're gonna run the ball. And, and for Mount Union, you need to get penetration and, and try to get the ball back to your offense here. North Central this season on fourth down. It's 12 for 22. It'll be Greenfield in the backfield. He gets the carry, makes a cut, and look at that explosion for the first down. Landon Jenkins was the guy to bring him down a gain of five. You know, you talked about doing the little things before. Those little things off the field add up to plays like this on the field. Fourth down, you hold your water, you're not going to jump offside, you're not going to fall start. You get good push, you give it to your Gallardi Trophy winner in Ethan Greenfield say, go get me a few yards, big fella, and he does it. Brad Spencer may be a first-year head coach, but he has been around this program for 19 years. He knows what he's doing. Fake the handoff. Laney looking to throw. He's looking for the home run ball. End zone incomplete. He had a man. And you said, Rita, you said it eventually. They were going to try to take a shot. They were looking for D'Angelo Hardy. And it was the right play call. Just a little too much on the ball from Laney. There was no safety in the middle of the field. Hardy's going to run a deep post here. Good move, and there's no safety in the middle. So right here should have been a touchdown. Luke Lanin knows that. Just got a little bit too much air on the ball. He knows it should have been six, but they'll come back to that play. And D'Angelo Hardy, he's the guy all the NFL scouts come and ask about. He's their star receiver. Second and ten. Keeper again. Lanin makes the first guy miss, showing off the moves. They said he's got wheels. Laning looked like it was going to hit at the line of scrimmage, picks up six. I mean, it's almost unfair, right, when, when you have the Gallardi Trophy winner and running back Ethan Greenfield, and you run zone read, and he pulls it and keeps it. And, and the speed that he has on the outside. Now, a nice job by Mount Union. Come up, make that tackle, keep that thing from going out the back door. You get into a third and four here. No chance for this Mount Union defense to get a stop here again. Possibly force a field goal. Or, We'll get him to another fourth down try. Three wide receivers on the bottom of your screen. A four wide receivers set on third and four. Lane looking right, completing D'Angelo Hardy. He's the most dependable receiver. He's 6'2", can run a 4'5", 
and right there he just sat down in the zone and picked up. 10. Yeah, 100% right. They spread him out, a little sit route at about six yards. You see the quick release from Lane and Boom puts it on him, turns up first down. There's just so many weapons on offense for North Central. Greenfield, Greenfield, Hardy, they can beat you so many different ways. First and ten out of the shotgun. Laney, good protection, throwing over the middle, incomplete, was looking for Nick Rubble. Yeah, just too much time back there. If you're Mount Union, you've got to get some pressure on him. That was Nick Rumble, by the way, number 11, who used to be a wide receiver, played defensive back almost this entire season, but because of some injuries, came back to wide receiver the last couple weeks and hasn't missed a beat. It's actually incredible. Look at his numbers on defense, and then, oh, boom, by the way, I'll catch 11 for 178 yards as well. Week 9, he was moved back to wide receiver. In the national, and, and, and this is a guy who in the 2019 National Championship game, he played at wide receiver, so he knows what he's doing. On the ground, that is Greenfield again. Picks up six, will bring up third and four. If you're Mount Union, clearly North Central came out hot. They threw a haymaker to start. What do you do defensively to slow down this offense? Yeah, right now I think you need to get more push up front. And the problem is, you know, you start sneaking up in the box, right, to, to stop the running game with Ethan Greenfield. But then they pull it and they have those vertical threats on the outside like D'Angelo Hardy. So this is tough. First and for, foremost, though, you need to establish the line of scrimmage. you got to set the edge if you're, if you're not in. You need to come up and start making some tackles, get some TFLs if you can. Play of the drive for North Central. Empty backfield. Plainy will step up in the pocket. And eventually will be brought down at the 15-yard line. Rossi Moore was there on the tackle. Yeah, and Rossi Moore, they did a nice job of spying Lane in that time. I actually think if, if Luke would have just paused a second, he had a receiver that was going to break open in that back corner. But a nice job by Rossi Moore, their most talented defender, to make that tackle. And to me, this is a win for the Mount Union defense, holding North Central to a field goal here. Field goal attempt, at least. So on fourth and two, the field goal unit will come on. Tanner Reigns, 7-11 this season. for Mount Union, keeping the score at 7 up. Bend but don't break. Excellent job by that Purple Raiders defense, red, led by Daryl Ely, the defensive coordinator. Great job by Mount Union. They get the stop. Their offense takes over on the other side. The number two seed, Mount Union Purple Raiders. What a season it has been. A perfect 14-0. Jeff Dart, in his third year as head coach, said, I am so excited for these guys who worked so hard to get back to the standard. And the standard for Mount Union is winning a national championship, Greeny. Oh, there's no doubt about it. It's been a young team, right? They're growing. The offensive line is young and growing. They're getting those, uh, getting that experience up because there's, there's nothing better than reps for experience. And, oh, by the way, Jeff Dart, what a start to his head coach for 31 and 1. Pretty good. Former offensive lineman, won three national championships as a player at Mount Union. 02, 05, and 06. Jeff Dart, I mean, Dart, like so many coaches on this coaching staff, played here at Mount Union. Tyler, it's a very man. You can hear those pads popping. A loss of two. Let's send it down to Coley. Uh, well, we just saw Tyler Echeverry uh, run the football right there, John. And I, I have to tell you that uh, you mentioned on the first drive, DeAndre Parker, the normal starter at running back. He's not going today. I was told just before the game not to expect him. He's actually got a, uh, a, a boot around his left foot. He's also on a crutch, so that foot was not good enough to go today. All right, Coley, thank you so much for that update. Second and 12, now Union throwing Wing Ruby. 
will haul that one in for a gain of seven. Reedy, how big? I mean, it, it hurts. I mean, it is, as well as Tyler Echeverry has been running. I mean, DeAndre Parker, over 1,200 yards, 18 touchdowns. Uh, and, oh, by the way, has caught 67 balls out of the backfield as well. So he's a dangerous weapon, can take it to the distance in the open field. So it's definitely a loss for Mount Union. Last completion to Wayne Ruby. That was a first play for positive yards so far this game for Mount Ruby. Set up third and manageable. They got third and five from the 25. Plump pressure finds his outlet in Echeverry. But he does not get to the marker. Antoine Walker pushed him out for a minute, too. He ended up stepping out a little short. Thought he'd be able to tightrope that sideline, get to that 30-yard line. Couldn't do it, but it just shows you the aggressiveness of the North Central defense there. They, they get pressure up front, force Braxton Plunk to dump it off quick to Echeverry, and then the defenders come from the secondary to make the stop. So Elliott Warner is going to come on to Plunk today. That is their second three and out to start this ball game for Mount Union. Joe Sacco is the deep man for North Central. A short punt. Sacco is going to let it bounce in front of him and will go out of bounds. And they're going to mark it out at the 43 yard line. So another good starting position, a 30 yard punt. North Central will get the ball back up 7 0 when we come back. Scott Satterfield ball. I've never seen anything like that, right? The team you used to coach is in the game, playing against the team you're going to. Start this drive off with Landon. You've seen that a bunch already. A quarterback keeper gets a first down, a gain of 17 and over that right side. And, and that's a design play. They pulled the big tight end, Matt Robinson, out in front of him as a lead blocker. It's a nice 6 3, 242 pounder in front of you. It's a nicely designed play. You're going to see it. You, you, you fake to Greenfield, and then you come around. Look at the big tight end out in front. Nice block. And then Lane and just covering the ball, ball security. Lane is already on the day, averaging over 10 yards a carry. Six rushes for 61 yards. This time they give it off to Greenfield. And Greenfield picked up a couple for more on Ethan Greenfield. Let's send it down to Coley. Guys, we've been talking about how vocal and, and active of a leader Ethan Greenfield is, the North Central running back. And on the, on the sideline after the last drive, the missed field goal for the Cardinals, I could hear him getting on his teammates saying, hey, that, na that not finishing drives like we just had, that's not us. We've got to finish these drives. We've seen a nice start to this particular one. Let's see uh, how the Cardinals are able to, to wind it down. And Coley brings up a great point. Coach Spencer told us they don't call each other out. They call them up to the standard that they want of North Central. So he's telling his guys, hey, we're better than this. Let's finish the drive. Lane completes it. That's to G No, excuse me. That was not caught by D'Angelo Hardy. Should have been caught Should by be. D'Angelo Hardy. And he knows that. Hit him right in the bread basket. That's just the case there where you just you know, you want to run the ball before. But now you're third and long in a situation that North Central has not been in today. But these Mount Union fans who made this trip, they are making some noise here in Annapolis. They are trying to get a third down stop. They know their team needs this momentum. I mean, both schools traveled really well for this national championship game. Lainan, a quarterback keeper, and Mount Union dials up the pressure. Vaughn Factor again with the stop. A great job by Mount Union there. That's a called quarterback draw. Vaughn Factor gets off his block from his defensive tackle position right there, number 92, and makes the tackle. But now North Central is kind of in that tweener land here at the 39-yard line. Obviously, too far for a field goal. Do you punt it and try to pin him back, or do you try to go for it here? We'll see as this first quarter comes to an end. That's the end of one here in the Stag Bowl. North Central scored a touchdown on their opening drive of the game. They have a 7-0 lead. But a decision coming up. It is fourth and nine. Do they go for it or punt it? We'll be back to Maryland after this.
Welcome back as we get ready for the start of the second quarter. North Central, the number one overall seed with a 7 0 lead over the number two overall seed. Now you have John Strickland alongside the partners, Rini and Gold, Colby Harvey on the field. North Central dominated that first quarter. They have decided to go for this fourth and long. And I thought they would in this tweener land here. They're averaging almost seven yards a play, so let's take a look. And a first penalty flag of the game. They'll start offense, number five. Five yard penalty, still four down. So they were going to pooch punt it. Everyone's yelling at me up here because I said they were going to go for it. That's a great call. No, but that's not why we're yelling at you. What happened? You literally just said we had not had a penalty. In the first oh, quarter. that is true. I, during the break, I said there was not a penalty in the first quarter. And the first play of the second quarter is a penalty. But blame Luke Lanin because he false started. He went backwards. You can't go back before you get the snap. He tried to get back there. Good job by the officiating crew. Now we'll see a traditional punt here. Why did you jinx it? We had a clean I am game a in the national It's the championship. announcer jinx off the air. <laughs> I was wondering why uh, our great producer, Andrew Crawford, was yelling in my ear. Now I know why. So off of the penalty, the punt team will come on. Short punt will go out of bounds. Mark around the 24-yard line. Excuse me, the 29. All right, let's take a look at the last time these two teams met. It was last year, the D3 semifinals. Braxton Plunk to Jaden Manley. Mount Union was up early, but then it was all North Central. Ethan Greenfield, 190 yards on 31 carries. North Central, 26-13 win. And I talked to some parents from Mount Union today in the hotel lobby, and they said they wanted they wanted revenge from that game last year, you know, losing at home. Even the parents want revenge. So after that 15-yard punt, Mount Union will start on the ground with Echeverry. Finding some space up the middle, picks up six on first down. Well, and until that run, Mount Union was averaging basically a yard a game on first down. Actually, less than that on first down. So. Good positive yardage on first down there for Mount Union, which is very necessary in a game like this. Got to stay ahead of the chains. In that first quarter, it looked like North Central was going to take control of this game, but they missed the field goal. Mount Union got the stop, and it seemed like that was a big play in this game. It absolutely was. Echeverry taken down in the backfield. Alex Gill with the stop, a loss of two. And when you have a team as good as Mount Union. Excuse me, I apologize. We got two number 14s. That was Sam Taviani yes. with the stop. <laughs> you see Taviani come up in run support. Like that outside linebacker position comes up, gets that tackle for loss. And by the way, Taviani's a guy, he's a fifth year senior. He's got an accounting degree. He had a, a job lined up um, and specifically said he came back this year because of the way they finished the season last year, losing that national championship. Third and seven. Plunk looking to throw. Scans will pull it down and tuck and run. Avoids a tackle. Nice job to pick up the first down. Braxton Plunk picks up eight. Yeah, terrific job by Braxton Plunk there. He's going to have to do this tonight. When plays break down, he's going to have to make something happen with his feet. He does a nice job. He's looking to the right. He comes back to the left. The pocket collapses, and then he gets upfield and picks up the first down. Antoine Walker was the closest guy there who could have stopped it short, but Plunk picked up the first down for Mount Union. So two men in the backfield. We've got K.J. Redman along with Edger Berry. Plunk looking to throw. Taking a shot deep. Incomplete, but we do have a penalty flag. Antoine Walker looked like he was, was holding Ruby's right arm as he was trying to get some separation. You see the flag come in from the back judge, side judge. It's going to be pass interference here on Walker, 26. And now the penalties will start raining in. <laughs> Everyone's just looking at you in the booth right now. Pass interference, defense, number 26. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first step. We talked about it earlier. That's going to be the matchup. Walker on Ruby. And so watch that left hand right there. He's got a grab. He's actually had a grab of the jersey, not just the arm. The back judge sees that grab right there. He's in a very good position, and that's a good call. 
I mean, this is a championship game, so you know you're going to have a top officiating crew. They're not going to miss that. First play in North Central Territory. On the ground, Tyler at Chaveri, but we do have a flag in the backfield. A gain of 11, but let's see what that penalty is for. And that's in the area of holding. The referee threw that. Holding. Offense. Number 72. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. So after no penalties in that first quarter, we've seen a ton of flags here in the second quarter. Three already. Jarrett Burris called for the hold. Yeah, Burris, the big right guard. I could, well, the referee's mic was on. You could hear him yelling, pleading his case. And that, that nullifies a really nice pickup by Echeverry. And in, in games like this, right, those penalties are magnified, right? Because, again, it's number one versus number two. You get a good gain on offense, especially when you've been, you know, sputtering your way to start this game. Boy, it hurts even more when you get that penalty. Play clock's down to three. First and 20 after the penalty. Clunk rolling out to his right on the run. Just threw it too far away from Orion Finley. What shows his arm strength there? That deep out as he tries to hit Finley, but as you said, just leads him too far out of bounds. That's one where he just, you know, he threw that ball before Finley made his break, but you just gotta throw it more inside where he can try to make the catch and toe tap. You know, Jeff Dart in his third season talked about how young this team was last year, but getting to this championship game, it started all the way back on January the 10th. That's when they got back on campus, talked about their goals. They wanted to be here, and they want to finish this off with a perfect season. Second and 20, Clunk in trouble. Oh, he is popped. Julian Bell hits him hard, a pickup of three. I mean, you can you can hear it all the way up here in the press box in a cold night like this. And that smarts a little bit. Take a listen here. B.J. Adamczyk also yeah. with a big hit. I mean, they are popping to me. And Adamczyk is the Will Wander. He won this job in summer camp. Played his tail off and has done a nice job this season. Third and seven. They could potentially be looking at targeting. The officials will take a look. We'll step aside and be back. After further review, personal foul, defense, number 34, targeting. Number 34 has been disqualified. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And that means B.J. Adamczyk has been ejected from this game, called for targeting. So the quarterback plunk, he's not defenseless. You can never use the crown of your helmet. Now, the crown of the helmet has been redefined this year to the six inches around the top. I thought they might not call it here because... You know, he, in, last year it definitely would have been crowned. That, that's a tweener one, and it's just hard. And that's why I'm a proponent of, you know, he's just trying to make a football play. He's not trying to be dangerous. I think the rules committee is going to tweak targeting eventually to be like a flavor one, flavor two, where, yeah, okay, we're going to give him the 15, but he's not ejected because it's very penal, obviously, to be thrown out of a championship game on that play. But by the letter of the law, the replay official, it's an ACC replay official crew, along with this the head referee, believe that was crown a helmet. So another penalty flag. This one was pre-snap. Looked like it's going to be a false start on Mount Union. False start. Offense, number 65. Five-yard penalty. First down. That's the left guard, Carson Barry. But and this will still be, even with the penalty, this will be the first play for Mount Union in North Central yeah, Territory. And so with the penalty and with some nice offensive plays, you feel a little momentum now coming to Mount Union here. Let's see if they can finish it off with some points on this drive. And Ruby's their guy who's at the bottom of the screen in one-on-one -on -one coverage. And another penalty flag before the snap. That is complete to Jaden Manley. It's at Rini Angolia <laughs> if you guys are upset about all these penalty flags coming through. Find them on Twitter. Well, I believe that was an illegal formation for Mount Union. They're trying to. Illegal formation, offense, five men in the backfield. 
That penalty is declined. The result of the play, second down. And obviously, you know, they got the tackle for the loss. They know essential, so they had to find that penalty. Don't want to give them the down over again. I should say this crew, good crew from the NEFOC, combination of the Empire 8 and Liberty League out of New York. They have done great work all season, and that's why they're rewarded with this championship game. This crew's been good thus far. Another pre-snap penalty. So that 15 is nullified because they just went back Ball start. 15 yards. Offense, number 78, five-yard penalty, second down. Well, technically the one penalty was declined, so they haven't. Yeah, and it's just, you just, you know, the little things, right? We talked about the little things, and the pre-snap penalties are really what bother coaches. What happens on a drive like this where you have so many penalties all happening? It's just, it, you just, it, there's, you can't get into a rhythm, right? No momentum. You just, it's choppy, uh, and you can't get anything going. So. It just, it, it's their drive killer, especially the free speed penalties like that. Deep backfield for Plunk. Looking to his right, directing traffic. Now we'll find his outlet and into Barry. He will be stopped at the 40. That'll bring up third down. All right, so when you were playing as a running back, yeah. you see drives kind of stall or fall apart like this. Who had to be the guy to bring guys together, get well, him back on track? Normally, you would love it to be the quarterback, but he doesn't necessarily have to be the leader. It could be a running back. It could be an offensive lineman, right? It's, it's whoever's a leader in there. But you just have to, at the end of the day, someone needs to step up and make a play, right? And you need to get some momentum. So, on, you know, right here, we're talking third and 12. You don't have to try to get this all. You're, you're in four-down territory. If you can pick up six or seven yards and get it to a manageable fourth and fourth down, because I believe they'll go for it, and they can pick up some yardage. Third and 12. That Chaveri off his hand, incomplete. And see, that's just, that's a pitch and catch that usually they make, right? So, Echeverry's probably not going to pick up the first down, but he's going to get five or six yards. He's going to cut it in half, and it's going to give Jeff Dart a decision on fourth down, which I believe he would have went for. But now, fourth and 12, now you're just going to try to pin him back deep and let that defense go out there and do some work again. So, Warner will come on to punt again. As Joe Sacco is deep, will set up at his own nine-yard line. Fair catch is called for. And a nice job by the punter, Elliot Warner, to pin him inside the 10, a 31-yard punt. North Central with a 7-0 lead. This is what they're playing for. A championship is on the line here in Division Three football. Come on back. Brad Spencer looking warm, drawing things up as a first-year head coach here at North Central. He's been with this program for 19 seasons now. Originally, he played wide receiver back in the early 2000s. I mean, it really was a joy to talk to him yesterday. He has so much passion for these young men and raising them the right way, making sure that they just don't play football, but they go on to something bigger. And, and he talked about his roster. He said, 87% of my roster is made up of Illinois kids. So I said, tell me, what, what is it like? What is an Illinois kid? What's their definition? He goes, they're tough, they're gritty, and they're willing to fight. And that's why I love the Illinois kids. He, he knows how good football is in the state of Illinois. And he said the rest of the country doesn't realize it. And he just keeps getting his players from there. Ethan Greenfield, a tough gain of maybe three on first down. Another question you asked that was actually pretty good when, when you asked him, you know, you haven't played many close games this season. How is your team going to be ready for a tough game, as you know, at Mount Union? And he said, we have competition Friday in the offseason where our guys compete in everything from spike ball to mint ball to steal the sock out of your parking <laughs> shoe. I mean, he gets these guys ready, and that's how they've come to play week after week. Another big collision in the backfield. Let's send it down to Coley.
and Brad Spencer talked to us yesterday, was uh, the fact that when he was a receiver at North Central, when he was taking classes, he took a class on coaching where he learned the philosophy of coaching, uh, you know, learning about uh, 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 John Wooden's uh, philosophy on coaching, Bobby Bowden's philosophy. And this is at a time when he actually did not think that he was going to get into this profession, but clearly uh, he took something away from that. Yeah, and, and he also, it's, it's more important really to coach the kids off the field than on it because it'll transmit here on third down. Third and nine, lean in, rolling out, will stop. Still has time. Look at that protection. And eventually incomplete. Good coverage downfield by Mount Union. Forcing a fourth down. Yeah, you said it. So the play before, they got their first TFL of the day. And he said, coming downhill, try to make some plays. Nice job by the defense. And then right there, great coverage on the back end and a three and out. So the Mountain Union defense has definitely stepped up their play. Tremendous job there. So Tanner Ains will come on to punt from his own end zone. Orion Finley will now be the returner on the punt return for Mountain Union. Blow this play dead before the snap. Penalty flag. Delay of game. Offense, number 27. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Well, listen, the third quarter is going to probably have zero penalties at all. I'm just going to say that. Right now. How are you doing that? Didn't you learn a lesson? What a clean first quarter. So after the penalty, Reigns has got to be careful there in the back of the end zone. Gets the punt away. It is low and takes a north central roll across the 50. A 50 yard punt. Nicely done by Tanner Reigns out of his own end zone. Mount Union will get the ball back. Down seven to nothing. The fans cheering for their Purple Raiders. NCAA championship coverage continues tomorrow with the Division II football championship game. That's at 1 p.m. on ESPNU. Now, for more information, visit NCAA.com, home for all 90 NCAA championships. Well, for Mount Union, this will be their best starting field position of the day, starting from their own 45-yard line. Let's see if they can get something going. Their first two drives stalled out. Their last drive started to make some traction. On the ground, they start with Tyler and Chaveri. A short gain of two. Now, it's interesting. Both teams come in here 14-0, perfect on the season, but very different makeups. Mount Union is a national powerhouse, 13-time national championship, and they're so good that now they can start recruiting nationally. They go to a small college recruiting fair, and they get a ton of, of players from the state of Florida. Now. Yeah, 33 players on their roster from the state of Florida. And as you said, Mount Union recruits itself, right, because of the 13 national championships, 22 appearances in this game right here. And so, yeah, uh, a lot of talent down there. Plunk, airing it out, downfield. Incomplete was looking for Ruby. That was Antoine Walker there in good coverage. And Ruby's one of those Florida guys from Pembroke Pines. It's just one-on-one -on -one coverage. We talked about this matchup early. And this is excellent coverage by Antoine Walker. Looks inside, and turns, locates the ball beautifully right on the hip of Wayne Ruby. Tremendous coverage there. And we spoke to Jeff Dart, too. He also said when he recruits guys, they're so good that they're getting kids who could potentially be walk-ons at a max school. Sure. So he's getting right? guys yeah. who want to play football at a very high level. And win championships. Correct. Jeff Dart is going to call a timeout here on third and eight coming up for the Purple Raiders. Yeah, and I mean, it's important, right? The defense for Mount Union, no doubt, has stepped up their play, right? We've seen them get some stops. That last, last possession, a three and out. You got them backed up. You get your offense real good field position. Now the offense needs to step up. And third and eight here. You know, they, they've tried some some vertical outside shots to Wayne Ruby. He's really good running some slant patterns inside. He's a, he's a big physical receiver. I think he can get some separation. So maybe get him 
the ball with some space and some yak yards, yards after the catch to get him going. You know what's interesting though, North Central feels really good about Antoine Walker. Yeah. We've seen him cover Wayne Ruby one-on-one -on -one throughout this entire game. They're going to be okay, they feel like, with Walker against Ruby. Yeah, they, they love the matchup. Uh, defensive coordinator Shane Durkin told us, as he said, Walker 6'1", over 200 pounds. He's got long arms, he's physical in the boundary corner. He's not afraid to hit, and there he is. He's matched up against him once again. Four wide receivers set for the Purple Raiders on third and eight. Plump throwing over the middle, complete. This is right at the sticks. Ruby with the catch, but he is marked just short. Good tackle by Julian Bell, a gain of seven. Well, that's that inside route I was talking about. It's a good catch, but an <laughs> excellent tackle by North Central. And so you got the two verticals, then Ruby comes underneath. But as you said, a very nice tackle there by Julian Bell. He's the leader on that defense. He makes all the calls from that safety uh, position. He's a very instinctive player. He's only 5'7", 165, and he loves to tackle. Fourth and short. Do you agree with this part? Here? Well, because it's 7-0, they have some momentum, and the defense has been playing so well from out Union. That's why Jeff Dart's kicking this away here. So Warner. Put some air underneath that part. We'll check up inside the 10. Another good punt by Elliott Warner. And they haven't got the movement up front, that offensive line from Mount Union. Another reason why Jeff Dark said, we're going to punt this thing away here and let our defense go back out there to work. It was an interesting first quarter because it seemed like North Central had all the momentum. They were up 7-0. They scored a touchdown in their first drive. Their second drive marched down the field. They looked like they were going to kick the field goal. They did. It was wide left. That seems like where the game turned a little bit to allow Mount Union to get some momentum back. Well, it was almost like, you know, Mount Union was kind of sleepwalking a little bit as they came out and took them a little bit to wake up. See the first two drives. Touchdown on the first drive, missed field goal on the second drive. Ever since, seven plays just 10 yards for this North Central offense. Looking to throw his laning from his own end zone across the middle. It's complete! D'Angelo Hardy! It's a foot! Race to the end zone inside the 20. No one's got to bring him down. D'Angelo Hardy, a touchdown. Oh my goodness. 94 yards to the house. And it all started up front once again with great protection by the offensive line. Here's the vertical shot. There's no safety in the middle of the field because they're coming up because of the run threat of North Central. D'Angelo Hardy one-on-one, -on -one, a great throw. We saw this play earlier where Lanin overthrew D'Angelo Hardy. Not that time. Hits him in stride. As he takes it to the house. Tanner Raines, his extra point is good. That is the big play potential for North Central. D'Angelo Hardy putting on the afterburners. Had a defender on him, says, uh-uh, not today. 14-0, North Central on top. We're back in Annapolis at the Stag Bowl where we just saw uh, D'Angelo Hardy, the North Central receiver, take a uh, long touchdown uh, reception to the house. You know, for, for Hardy, the journey to this game wouldn't be complete without mentioning his mother, Antoinette. Uh, he has her name scrawled on his cleats and on pieces of tape that he's wearing around his wrists. Uh, Hardy lost his mother to cancer last year just as training camp was beginning. Uh, you know, the North Central Cardinals have really been trying to make sure that his well-being has been good. They've, they've allowed him to walk away from football when he's needed to. And they've also embraced him with open arms, even holding a surprise birthday party for him last year just to keep his spirits high. Clearly, his spirits on the field right now are high after that touchdown reception. Coley, he is such an exceptional young man. We talked to head coach Brad Spencer about him. He said, you know, it was tough for him. And now he even turns this one over to 25 as a penalty flag comes in. So he admitted it was tough for him on senior day, you know, losing your mom a year later, dealing with that. And Brad Spencer said, you know what, these kids, what they're dealing with, they're your heroes because they're handling things. I don't know that I would know how yeah. to handle it. And Brad Spencer's got a very special relationship with D'Angelo Hardy. Remember, Spencer was the offensive coordinator. He's a former wide receiver coach as we get the call here. During the return, illegal block in the back. Return team, number eight. Ten-yard penalty. First down. 
And, and you know, he told us about D'Angelo Hardy, just a special kid, super smart, studies film, a ton of film off the field, and a dynamic athlete on top of it. He's another player for North Central that's been timed at 22 miles an hour wearing that apparatus. So we saw some of that speed on that deep pass, but just an incredible young man. And when the NFL scouts come, they ask all the coaches, they want to know about players' makeup. Yeah. Well, Coach Spencer tells them. He tells them the story about his mom passing away, and he says it just shows these scouts that he can handle the person. The scouts can see the physicality and the athleticism and the hands. They want to, they want to learn about the players on the inside. This Mountain Beauty respond down 14 to nothing. Plunk on the run, throws behind his receiver, incomplete. He was looking for Ruby. And one of the biggest things for Mount Union tonight, and we mentioned earlier, is first down, right? When, when you don't pick up positive yards on first down, even if it's three or four, it's tough. Because now you're second and ten. Now you're more predictable, right? The, the defense is sitting back thinking, okay, more pass and run. And if they do run, let's come up and stop them. We'll give up a couple yards, but then, boom, you stand up and it's third and long. Six oh seven to play here in this first half of the national championship game here in Division Three football. North Central up fourteen to nothing. Second and ten. Pass outlet to KJ Redmond, the running back. A good run after the catch for Redmond. They're going to give him the first down. Yeah, and it's exactly what you want to do. KJ Redmond catches that little pass on the sideline, and then it immediately explodes up the sideline. No dancing. Get up there, use your speed, and pick up that first down. Now, Redmond is normally the third back, but because DeAndre Parker is out with an injury, he's the backup to Echeverry, and Redmond's a guy who has really battled injuries over the course of his career. But he showed you there, he's got some speed burst in him. He could be a spark. And the other thing I like about all the Mount Union running backs, they all have very good hands out of the back that they all catch the ball extremely well. Top four, snap is off. Clark looking to throw again. Pressure gets away from Gilroy. And did he complete that? Yes, he did. That is a completed catch. Jaden Manley tiptoeing the sidelines, picked up 13. And that's the first time we've called Jaden Manley's name out today. And what a catch as he goes up. Just needs one toe in. Boy, that's going to be close. I think replay might take a look at it. It looked like it was in, but it doesn't look like they're going to stop it. So it's the Raiders trying to go quick. Yeah. The play did get course. blown dead yeah. before the snap got off. Looked just a little too close to me to let it go. The previous play is under review for a completed catch. And remember, Division Three normally doesn't have replay review, but once you get into the playoffs, the games are on TV, you're going to have replay review so really for the referee crew as well they're not used to getting buzzed down and stopping plays as we take a look at it and first of all heck of a throw yeah. and a heck of a catch now let's see where the feet were for manly and remember possibly the most important thing about this play is it was called a completion on the field remember you need indisputable video evidence right beyond all doubt now is that on the way <laughs> yeah. or i mean can you tell from that look to me, it looks like it's on the white, but can you tell me indisputably without, you know, with no doubt whatsoever that it is? That's what's hard to me, and that's why I think it's important that it was called a completion on the field. We'll see if it stands or not. I mean, to me, I think it hit the white, but I'm not 100% sure. Are you? No, not at all. That was Dan Gilroy again, <laughs> defensive tackles for North Central, one of the captains that put that pressure immediately on Braxton Plunk, forced him out of the pocket, and as you said, nice job just to get the ball released, and Manley goes up, makes that catch. We'll see if it's going to count here in a second. Our referee David Herger, replay official Jim Corpora. And Let's that, see, here's yeah. the call. I think it's going to stand. After further review, the ruling of a completed on the catch is confirmed. First down. Wow, so they, they didn't stand. They confirmed it. So they, you know, I'm going to disagree with them there Let's because go! to me, it could have been touching the white. I have no problem with the play standing now, but they can use confirm because the verbiage does matter. So Jaden Manley did get a toe down in bounds. The catch will stand in Mount Union. The clock 
ticks down under five minutes to play here in this first half. Plump flushed out to his right. And we'll throw that one out of bounds. He was looking for Edwin Reed. And we talked about it earlier about one of the keys for North Central defensively was to get to Plunk with just the four defensive linemen. They're doing a nice job because even when they're not sacking the quarterback, you're getting them off his spot, you force him out of the pocket, and it disrupts the play, and forces him to throw it away. And remember, this is a quarterback in Plunk for the season, completing almost 75% of his passes. Second and ten, throwing it over the middle, completing for the first time as to his tight end, Evan Wygant, a gain of six. See, and I like that play, right? Don't try to pick it all up. Got six yards. Now you get it to a manageable distance here. But I've noticed about Plunk, he does a good job of scanning the he field does. and going yep. through his progressions and his receivers. Yep. Very intelligent. Knows what the defense is doing. He's another one watches a lot of film. And you, you, you really have to, especially in that quarterback position. I mean, we were told he was voted a captain for ever playing a game for Mount Union. I mean, that speaks volumes about the work he puts in off the field. Plunk on third and four. This time he'll roll out to his left. And he can't square his shoulders. He'll be dropped. Danny Nuccio with the sack. Nuccio, boy, he looked like he was shot out of a cannon for North Central. You know, once Plunk broke the pocket and was out of contain, that, that was a key for Nuccio to just come. And he was running like he was on fire as he got to Braxton Plunk for the sack. Right here, now he's gonna break contain. Watch 33, right side of the screen, you're gonna see him, here he comes. Tremendous job. Warner somehow gets that punt away, but a penalty flag. That's my fault. I'll just say that every time. No, excuse me, he put his knee down on the turf, so that play is dead. Yep, and, and oh. hunters know that, right? On a low ball, you have to go down. You have to squat. You cannot kneel because if that knee comes down, once you possess the ball, you're down in college football. And that's a good job by the officiating crew to watch that. So uh, a little worse than a penalty there. So a 12-yard loss. By oh, they're, really on the field. they're really on the field is that the punter had possession of the ball with a knee down. Therefore, turnover on downs, first down. No and we got a great look at it there. That, that's an easy call. I mean, replay looks at every play, so they'll look at it. But his knee was clearly on the ground, and he knows better than that. You, you just can't do that on those on those low punts, on those snaps. So look at this field position for North Central. They started off on the ground. That's Ethan Greenfield picking up seven. And this is critical right now for Mount Union. You've got to keep them to within a field goal because you're already down by two scores. Yeah, and, and, and just the momentum factor, right? You want to get a stop. you got to have something positive going in at halftime. You, know, you give up a late touchdown, especially, and you go down 21 nothing to this team. It's tough sledding coming back in the second half. North Central in the red zone. And he's second and three from the 10. Greenfield bouncing, trying to get outside, lowering the shoulder. He'll be stopped a, York, a yard short. It'll bring up third and one. Yeah, Jesse Bell, the safety up there and run support. And that's what you, when you play against a team with a running back like Ethan Greenfield, you know, your safeties come up a lot in run support. And they have to be good tacklers. So they went to Greenfield. The first two plays of this drive, you go back to him to get one more yard. I'm old school, yes. All right, it's the best, you get the best running back in the country. It's third and one. You give it to him again. Greenfield led the nation the last three years in rushing yards, dragging with defenders on his back. Where do they spot him? It's going to be close. He looks like he spotted him short, but it looks like he fought at the end there to possibly pick it up. But I could tell by the way the headline judge was running in, he was rolling him a little bit short. 
about a half yard short. I think Brad Spencer's going to go for it again. Right here, he should have been tackled for a loss, but he gets a good dive there at the end. Jacob Four Scott degrees. was the man holding on who got the initial penetration from Mount Union. And I think it was a good spot. He needed to get to the seven. He's just short of it. So North Central, they're going to go for it. They are one for one tonight on fourth downs. Greenfield stays in there to the right of Laney. They give the carry again, plunging forward. I don't think he got it. With the way they're spotting it, he is short. Rossi Moore, Matt Lilia in there. Where do they mark it? Yeah, I'm with you. He needed to get to the seven. He did not get there. A turnover on downs. What a stop by the Purple Raiders defense. Yeah, great penetration up front. Look at that push up front. Tremendous job. On the play. Matt Lilia, 98, was the one with the initial penetration to get to Greenfield. And then the rest of the Purple Raiders get there. A big time stop on fourth down. Mount Union defensively on fourth downs. Their opponents are now six for 20. That is their 14th stop of the season. Man, when you needed it big, Mount Union D stepped up. Yeah, this defense has stepped up big time here. Besides that first drive and a couple big plays, with the big touchdown play, they've done a nice job in that big stop there. Clunk on first down, throwing it, finds his running back at Chaveri. Will stay inbounds. That means the clock will continue to run. A minute to play. Mount Union, they've got two timeouts to play with here in this first end this first half. Yeah, but you just you gotta be careful, right? When it's backed up to your goal line, you just want to get that chunk play to get you some room. And that's why this clock is still running. They don't want to burn the timeout yet. Don't seem to be in much of a hurry here. Second and four. Clock. We'll dump it off underneath. Echeverry staying on his feet. Shedding defenders will pick up the first down. The clock will stop momentarily. Yeah, he picks up 10. I think Jeff Dart might use one of his timeouts here. Yeah, I would. With 30 seconds left, you got to use one here. And how about this run after the catch by Echeverry? And that, and you got to make plays, right? I mean, making plays involves breaking tackles. He breaks one, then a little whoopsie doo spin cycle. Gets upfield, picks up the first down. All right, so Mount Union going to talk things over. How about the sunny NFL countdown crew? You got that you covered for week 15, 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. And the Monday night countdown crew will get you set for the Rams, Packers, 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific. Both of these are on ESPN and the app. You know, we may see some of these players on the field play on Sunday. There is a history of Division Three football players making the jump to the NFL. You see a lot of wide receivers make the jump, right? There a couple good ones in this game, D'Angelo Hardy, Wayne Ruby. See the list of former D3 players who are currently in the NFL. 30 seconds to play in this first half. Plum. Chaveri just dropped it. And that's just the case there, you know, where Chaveri's thinking about running the ball before he catches it. But just to get back to the Division Three players in the NFL, it just, in today's world, scouts will find you. You know, if you're good enough to play, it doesn't matter. And I mean, this Mount Union program's put a couple through. Pierre Garçon, uh, Cecil Shorts, another really good wide receiver, both uh, nice careers in the NFL. So they'll find you if you can play. Also, keep coach, right? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of coaches, of coaches who have right. made their starts in D3 football who have worked their way up. Yeah. This is good football. The completion, 25 seconds. Caught running. Hit as he throws. Incomplete. Dan Gilroy, the man applying the pressure. Yeah, it, it, we've called his name out a bunch tonight. He's the heart and soul of this defense. Defensive coordinator Shane Durkin told us he's the leader. Does everything they want him to do, and uh, oh, by the way, he's really good and, and tough to block. <laughs> you know, he started for four years. He's, he's started every year he's played. And he's gotten better and better. One of those Illinois kids, right? That's really good. So Mount Union will use their final timeout of the half. 
to talk things over. 23 seconds to play in this first half, third and 10 coming up. Well, and now, right, if, if you're North Central, you try to put some pressure on, right? You try to stop them, okay? Um, you have three timeouts to play with because we just saw the punter make an error, right? So worst case scenario for North Central, you stop them, you force them to punt again and see if you can make a big play right before half. If you're just joining us, the star running back for Mount Union is out today. DeAndre Parker is in a boot. Tyler Echeverry, the backup, got the start. K.J. Redmond is the backup tonight. We've seen that be a, a big loss so far for this offense for Mount Union. Yeah, th there's no doubt. And he, you know, DeAndre Parker is one of the captains of this team, so he's a leader. But again, you know, you're talking about, when you look at his rushing yards, 1,254 yards, eight, 18 TDs coming in, and then 67 receptions for 533 yards and three touchdowns. That's a lot of productivity that you're losing, you know, from your number one running back. And, and that hurts, undoubtedly, in a game like this. Mount Union comes out. Three wide receivers at the bottom of your screen. A four wide receiver set. Plunk on third and ten. Flushed out to his left. Throwing on the run, getting out of bounds. It is complete to Ruby. Picks up five. Well, Ben Lilly, the left tackle, held Dan Gilroy, number nine, on that play. I mean, Gilroy is just, he's tough. And, and, and Lilly's having a problem with him. They're going to have to put someone there to help him because it was clearly holding there on Dan Gilroy. Holding, offense, number 74. That penalty is declined, there's open play, fourth down. Take a look, top of the screen, and they tried to chip him with Echeverry, and he didn't, and you just see how strong he is, and hooked him in the beginning, did Lily, and just kind of rode him to the ground. That is holding right there, and uh, yeah, Dan Gilroy's been a problem thus far in the first half for Mount Union. Because even when he's not necessarily making the tackle or the sack, he's affecting the play. So Warner on to punt again. We'll get this one off. A low kick, fielded by Joe Sacco. Has a crease over the right side, trying to jump over the defender, just tripped up. We'll get into Mount Union territory. All right, eight seconds to play. What do you do if you're North Central? Well, you've had some some success, right, with your vertical shots with D'Angelo Hardy. So you got your timeouts, your pass midfield. You take a shot down the field, see if you can get to field goal range. The clock will stop after a first down, remember? So you can use the middle of the field here. See if you can pick yourself up three before the half. A 40-yard punt by Warner, but a 22-yard return by Sacco gives North Central a chance to add to their lead here with eight seconds to play in this first half. You just got to be mindful if you're North Central. If you catch the ball over the middle, if you give yourself up and go down, it'll stop the clock. But if you stay in the field of play and you don't get down, you only have eight seconds here. First and 10 from the 48. Lane pressure. Penalty flag is down. And he is dropped. So let's see what that flag is. Right now, the clock says zero. And I believe it's going to be holding now. We got a little pushing going on afterwards. Remember, the half cannot end on a defensive penalty. I believe this is an offensive penalty, so the half should be over. But we will get the call here shortly. And from here, it looked like it was 58, Sam Pryor. That'll be called with the holding call, and uh, that should end the half. Holding, offense, number 58. That penalty is declined. It's the end of the half. So North Central scores a touchdown on their first possession of the game. They score another touchdown in the second quarter. Take a 14-0 lead into the locker room. Credit the Mount Union defense. Though. They, the defense kept Mount Union in this game here, giving them a chance in the second half. The big play was D'Angelo Hardy. 
four yard touchdown reception just outran all the defenders giving North Central a 14 nothing lead here at the half in the national championship game here division three football. Brad Spencer, first-year head coach for North Central. He was the offensive coordinator when they won the championship in 19. This is his first year at the helm. And Spencer is standing by with Coley. Uh, coach, a couple of explosive touchdown passes for your quarterback, Luke Lane, in there, the 34-yard and then 94-yard pass. What's opened up the deep downfield passing game for you? Yeah, I think just keying on our run game. And, uh, you know, we've got to get our run game going. we got to get Ethan and Terrence going. So we've got to figure out a few things at half. But... And, you know, they're committing to the box, and so we're able to get over the top with a couple of big plays. Um, should have got a points there there at the end. Our defense did a great job, the miscue on their punt, and we weren't able to punch it in, so that's disappointing. So get in and make a couple of adjustments. Defense keep doing what they're doing, and come on, play a strong second half. What has your defense done so well? Only uh, less than 60 yards of total offense that you guys have allowed on that side. Yep, defense line's doing a great job getting pressure on their quarterback and then limiting number six. I mean, those are the keys right now, playing top-down defense. Don't let them rush the football, and D-line's got to keep playing, uh, especially with our middle linebacker going out with that targeting foul. Nooch come in. He's done a nice job so far. Uh, just got to keep playing real strong up front, win the line of scrimmage. Thanks very much, Coach. Thank you. All right, Coley, good stuff. The man up front who's been causing the havoc, Dan Gilroy on that defensive line for North Central. After the break, we're going to send it to the studio. Zubin Mahenti, Trevor Maddich will get you caught up at the half. North Central with a 14-0 lead over Mount Union. Welcome back to the 2022 Stag Bowl on ESPN. We are at the half. North Central with a 14-0 lead over Mount Union. A couple of midshipmen holding the trophy. That's what they're playing for as we get set for the start of the third quarter. John Tripp and alongside my partner, Rini and Goli. Rini and Goli, Coley Harvey is the reporter on the field. And Rini, it's 14 and nothing. It could have been a lot more. Yeah, this game feels like it should be 24 nothing, maybe 20 nothing, but again, credit. The Mount Union defense got a lot of big stops uh, to keep themselves in this game here with a chance here in the second half. The Tanneranes will boot things off to start this third quarter. Mount Union, they won the toss and deferred, so they will get the ball first here to start this third quarter. North Central number one, Mount Union number two, both undefeated. Second half is underway. Short return by Finley. And let's take a look at our first half highlights. North Central, they got the scoring started early. Well, they looked great in that first quarter. Landon rolls out, hits Ethan Greenfield, the Lardy Trophy winner down that right side. And in the second quarter, just an absolute dime to D'Angelo Hardy. 94 yards later, he's in the end zone. Now off the special teams mishap, North Central got a short field, but Mount Union's defense coming up big with a fourth down stop. And that was a must-needed stop there, and they got it. First play of the third quarter is Tyler Echeverry straight up ahead. And let's toss it down to Coley. He got to speak to Jeff Dart at the half. I sure did, Johnny. You guys were just referencing Mountain Union's defense. Well, Jeff Dart was quite pleased with the defense getting timely stops. The problem, however, he said, was the fact that his offense is shooting itself in the foot. There's too many penalties, whether it's holdings or false starts. They're just not getting a chance to get into a rhythm and get going that way. I asked him about the absence of DeAndre Parker, if that's affecting it. He said certainly, but Tyler Tavari has played a lot of football. He certainly is. A good catch there by Wayne Ruby using his hands to go up and get that one. Strong throw by Plum. But they start as a second half, right? Positive yards on first down that we talked about, right? Give yourself some breathing. Stay on schedule, right? Now second down, you get a nice pickup here and you get it to a manageable third and one here. You got to convert this first down. You got to get that rhythm that Coley was talking about that Jeff Tart was telling. So third and one. First drive here in this third quarter, and Chaberry lowers the shoulder and picks up the first down. Dan Gilra was the man on the stop, picked up three. Yeah, there's no doubt Jeff Dart got after his offense in the locker room, said, listen, guys, stop with the penalties, right, which he told Coley about, and now let's get in rhythm. Get some running going, let's try to... Establish some movement on that line of scrimmage. Easier said than done against a very good North Central defensive line. Let's remember, Jeff Dart was a former offensive yes. lineman. So he knows how to motivate his guys. 
big boy football right now as Echeverry gets nine there on first down, stopped by Zach Orr. Yeah, and to me, the key in this second half for Mount Union, I know I sound like a broken record, but it's first down. Positive plays on first down, even if they're just ordinary three or four, I think is going to pay dividends for them here in this second half. And that was the longest rush of the day for Mount Union. Pick it up nine there on first down. And second and short. Echeverry picking his spots. And you can see Mount Union comes out of the half with a different swag. A little pep in their step, I would say. And you like the aggressiveness that Echeverry runs with as well. A Florida kid. We talked about 33 players on the roster from Florida. Echeverry from Naples. And just he's got good speed as well. If he gets into the second level, he can take it to the house. They are going to continue to feed Tyler Echeverry. He is the backup running back who got the start because DeAndre Parker is out with a foot injury today. But Echeverry, he's been good. You know, in Mount Union last week against Warburg, they had an issue in the first half running the ball as well. And they got better in the second half. And if they can do that, if they can establish somewhat of a running game, it's going to open up on the outside. And then you're going to see Wayne Ruby step up. They're all everything wide receiver. Take the handoff. Hulk is going to throw. He finds his tight end and Chase Lawson. Lawson, he's been huge up front, blocking for his running backs, and now he catches the first down, a gain of eight. And nice job by Braxton Plunk, taking what the defense gives him. Chase Lawson just slides out to the right, puts it on him quickly, lets the big tight end turn and get upfield, pick up that first down. All right, let's send it to Coley with more. Uh, yeah, Mount Union coach uh, Jeff Dart was also telling me his message at halftime to his players. Guys, we've got 30 minutes to flip the script right here. We've got to make something happen. They're doing it so far this drive. Oh, they've done it right away, Coley, out of this half. A gain of three there on first down. And to your point, it's been the first down play yeah. that's been more effective for Mount Union yeah. in the second half. And really, to me, this is a statement drive for Mount Union. you got to go down. You got to get points on the board, preferably a touchdown, just to show North Central, hey, we're Mount Union. We're not going away. We're not going anywhere. Tyler Echeverry on this drive, six carries, 31 yards. They're now in North Central territory. And remember, this is a team in North Central, average margin of victory over 48 points. 13 was their closest. If you're Mount Union, you just want to get into the fourth quarter, keep this thing tight, and see what they're made of. Well, he keeps it. Hurdle's a defender. He jumped over Zach Orr. Won't get the style points, but it was effective. Picked up three. And, and positive, right? Positivity. No lost yards, no TFL. Going forward, as you said, didn't pick up a punch. Voids the hit. Goes airborne. Positive yards and a manageable third down here. How about this? Tenth play of the drive coming up for Mountain Union. First possession this third quarter. And you got two downs to pick this up here. Obviously, you're not going to try a long field goal on a cold night like this. Third and four. Echeverry pushing the pile, trying to get there. He's going to be marked just short. A gain of three. I just love, though, how he keeps those legs turning, right? You can see him down there. Good pad level, low behind it. Keep those legs moving. He doesn't quite get it, but he's going to get it to fourth and one here. And the offense is still on the field for the Purple Raiders. The sideline's going nuts. They're getting hype. Fourth and a one for Mount Union. Echeverry. The extra push, and it looks like he got it. Yeah, he picked that first down up, and that's all Tyler Echeverry. At the end of that run, you see him, Julian Bell, the safety comes up, meets him in the hole. Low man wins, Echeverry gets underneath it, watch the push at the end, this little push right there, gets that first down. There's a little extra juice in this no stadium doubt. right now. Yes, no doubt. This Mountain Union team has come out in the second half, a different team that we saw in the first half. So Echeverry gets a breather, KJ Redman, the backup is in in the backfield. Take the handoff. Plunk trying to take a shot down the sideline. Incomplete. They were looking for Ruby. That was Antoine Walker got his hands on. That's been a great matchup today. Every time those guys have gone at it, it's been phenomenal to watch. Walker's won a few. Ruby's won a couple. That's big time football right there between those two players. And those are two guys right here. No doubt in my mind, they could play on Division I rosters. Both those guys. How about Walker? The defender yeah. turning his head, getting around, and actually being in a better position. After 
taking the shot. It'll be second and ten. Redmond can't shed the tackler. That's Tyler Rich gobbling him up. A loss of one. And that strength of that North Central defense again, the defensive line. Said it, Tyler Rich, 6'2", 270, the senior out of Pontiac, Illinois. Coming down, making that tackle for a loss. Now you're third and long here for Mount Union. You're going to see that defensive line pin their ears back here and try to get to Braxton Plum. Is this where you get into field goal range, or is this four down territory? Well, I, I you know, depending on how you feel with your kicker, you can get the three if you want, but it may be four down territory. Third and 11, flushed out. Plum, pump fakes, keeps it himself, diving forward, and he got the first down. Braxton Plunk on third down, picks up 12. And, and that's what you need to do, right? Make plays. Braxton Plunk gives a fake here in the middle. You're going to see a North Central defender just bite on it right. He gives him a little bit right there, and then steps up inside. Knows to go forward and get that first down. Impressive run there by Braxton Plunk. Redmond in the game in the backfield. They give him the carry, makes a cut, finds the hole, spins off a defender. K.J. Redmond just mashing buttons out there, picks up seven. And even the running backs look like they're running harder, right? I mean, it just looks like a different offense. But again, you know, should we be surprised? Mount Union, right? They've been in this game 22 times. They've won it 13 times. It's the gold standard for Division Three football, and really, uh, the head coach, Brad Spencer, in North Central told us that, right? They are. This is what everyone's trying to get to. First drive of the third quarter. This is the 16th play of the drive. Redmond running through an arm tackle. Eventually will be taken down at the 11. He'll be a yard short. This work gets a little harder to run because the field gets condensed. Squished in from the back. Defenders step up a little bit more. And they've done the majority of their work here in this third quarter on the ground. They've used Tyler Echeverry and KJ Redmond to perfection. And give credit to that offensive line and young group that's gained a lot of experience. In the game, that is Lane Mitchell. And Mitchell will be stopped short. And I tell you right there, Danny Nuccio, 33. He's done a nice job coming into this game, BJ. Adam Chick, of course, was ejected in the first game in the first half because of targeting. Nocio's done a nice job. So Mitchell stays in there at running back. It is fourth and one for Mount Union. They gotta get to the nine. Mitchell! Cusimano with the stop and North Central defense holds. Yeah, Cusimano shot through that gap. Number seven, one of the most athletic linebackers for North Central. And Mount Union comes up empty. Well, that was the most effective drive of the game for Mount Union. 18 plays, 70 yards, almost nine minutes. But the defense stepping up big. For North Central. Yeah, I mean, you put Lance Mitchell in there, a little bit more of your power back, 5'8", 185, 190, but when you get penetration like North Central did from Angelo Cusimano, linebacker, uh, Julian Bell, the line uh, safety was up in there, just nothing he could do. Greenfield with the carry on first down. Still going. He was hit at the line of scrimmage eventually, was able to churn out three yards there. Yeah, just keep fighting. But boy, how about that drive? Almost nine minutes off the clock. How but deflating yeah, nothing is that as an offense to come away with no points. It's tough with nothing to show for, right? Because you did everything right. You did everything perfect, right? You went right down the field. But again, the field condenses down there. And to walk away with no points, it's disheartening. Second and seven for the Cardinals. That is Greenfield stretching it out to the right side. Slithers through the hole. And he's got some room across midfield. Just deep on the defender. Eat that stiff arm. Ethan Greenfield throws Derek Bradley to the floor. A 
eight-yard pickup. Whoa! And he picked up a great block halfway through. Now, I know everyone uh, that's a Mount Union fan was yelling, it's a block in the back. You can block on the side. As long as it's on the side, it's legal. Great job breaking the tackle by Greenfield there. And you see it's Rummel right here. That is a legal block. That's a great block by Nick Rummel. And just look at the power from Ethan Greenfield with the stiff arm to finish off that run. Terrence Hill, now the running back, he will get in touch. Trying to bounce it himself. He was dragged down low. A short gain on first down. What a run by Ethan Greenfield. I mean, that was the longest rush allowed by Mount Union of the season. Yeah. The previous long was 25 yeah. yards. Ethan Greenfield is such a good running back. That 42, that man right there, Terrence Hill, who happens to be a captain, is the backup. He was still an all-region running back as a backup. You know, that, that's how good he is. But he loves North Central. He's a captain. He's a leader. He wanted to stay here. Be a backup, play special teams, and try to bring home a national championship. And that shows you what it's all about playing college football. Coming back for your fifth year, and you know you're going to be the backup. The keeper, Lending. And that one goes nowhere. Rossi Moore read that one immediately. Yeah. Great eye discipline by Rossi Moore, number eight. As Lane pulls it and keeps it. Moore was not fooled. Time for that defense to step up once again. I mean, you know, they've been challenged a lot tonight, and they've stepped up a lot. Well, time to do it again. Four minutes to play here in this third quarter. It is third and ten for North Central. Hill's the man in the backfield just to the left of Lanin. Hill hits the carry, bounces to the right, slips off another defender. Eventually brought down by Jesse Vale. He'll be a few yards short of the first down. Yeah, and I think you're going to go for it. They're going to bring Ethan Greenfield, bring your Gallardi Trophy winner in. And listen, in the first half, Mountain Union won these battles, right? They got the push up front defensively and, and stopped North Central down here. Now, it's a roll reverse. This is a attitude play here for North Central if you're Brad Spencer. Tell your offense, you need to get this first down. Yeah, if you're the Cardinals, this is the third trip to the red zone. You're 0 for 2 tonight. You missed a field goal in that first quarter, and then the ball went away on downs in the second quarter. Fourth and two. Great field. A collision, and he gets to the 15, enough for a first down. Yeah, you can hear the pads popping up here. And that's how you run with a purpose right there. Ian Sexton. Mason McMillan there in the tackle. But I love the eyes. Great camera work there. You can see the eyes of Ethan Greenfield. You know, when I was a running back back there in the eye formation, you like to kind of take that pre-snap read, and I would scan my eyes, right? Because defenders will look at you, see if you're kind of peeking where you're going to run. But we want to give it away. Two minutes to play here in this third quarter. First and ten. Back to Greenfield. And it is amazing, even with three defenders draped all over him, he is still moving the football, picks up five yards there. Yeah, good push, and dare I say, every time I say something, I change it. So then why do you get go there? Because I'm, I'm going to stop you. No, I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop This has got to be the fastest quarter that we've done a game all year long, and this thing is flying by. Only two possessions. Think about that. My partner's giving me dirty looks up here, folks. We are in store for the longest fourth <laughs> quarter in history. Hey, I didn't say anything about the fourth quarter. Greenfield over 100 yards on the night. 18 carries, 109 on the ground. This is Hill. I mean, a one-two punch of Greenfield and Hill. You see why this rushing attack from North Central is so good. He picks up six there. And Terrence Hill has that, that very low, strong, uh, you know, center of gravity, strong legs, 5'9", 205. And it's just, it's just a one-two punch, right? Like battering rams. You, you run it, I'll take a breather. I'll come back and run it. I mean, what a luxury. You have the best running back in the country in Ethan Greenfield, but when you give him a blow, you still bring in an all-region running back in Terrence Hill. Terrence Hill is in grad school. The commitment he's showing to this team, the alums have committed to him. He's got two job offers already for finance by alums of North Central. Greenfield back in the game. Another rush. That is the ninth rush of this drive. 
83 yards on the ground. Rossi Moore there. I was going to say, Rossi Moore again in there. Uh, I stepped up, but this is kind of a statement to the statement of Mount Union running the ball, right? Mount Union went down to start this third quarter. They get stopped, and now North Central says, well, we're going to bring it right back down at you all on the ground. Ten seconds to play here in this third quarter, and North Central, they got four fingers in the air. They are going to let this clock wind down. It is going to the fourth quarter. North Central with a 14-0 lead. National Championship trophy on the line. Both teams D stepping up big. Who's going to take it here in the fourth? Well, bowl season rolls on tomorrow on ABC at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. It's the Celebration Bowl. Deion Sanders will coach undefeated Jackson State his final game before leaving for Colorado against North Carolina Central. Then they got Washington State squaring off against Fresno State in the Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl presented by Stifel. And at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, SMU takes on BYU in the New Mexico Bowl. All three games are also on ESPN Deportes. And the ESPN app. Let's take a look at the active win streaks in all of college football. How about two teams squaring off right now? Mount Union, North Central, both 14 and 0. What a year it's been for both teams. Yeah, impressive, no doubt. It's just like one of those times where both teams, the best two teams, play each other, and someone's got to come out the winner, and someone's got to be the loser. Bentley returns at past the 30. Let's check in with Coley on some of the injuries today. Yeah, uh, John, you, we just saw Mount Union defensive tackle Duke Hill go out uh, following the end of that last drive. I can tell you I've seen him come over to the Mount Union sideline. He has been sitting on a table as he's been getting his right leg, his right foot uh, evaluated. His head has been in his hands the entire time. A few of his teammates, including the injured DeAndre Parker, have come over and put their arms around him. Speaking of Parker, his replacement at running back in this game, Tyler Echeverry, was out the last drive. He's back in right now. I totally appreciate that. Fake the handoff to Echeverry. They throw it to the tight end, Lawson. He gets out of bounds. Mount Union rushing in that first half. Nine rushes, negative 17 yards. On that last drive, 15 rushes, 56 yards. What did they find in that last drive, even though they didn't put points on the board? Yeah, no, I just think that they were aggressive. They were getting pushed, right, in terms of that. It's just an attitude of that offensive line. They were running between the tackles. They just couldn't score when they got down inside the red zone. Well, trying to direct traffic has a man open. That's Wayne Ruby, his most dependable receiver, picks up 11 first down. And Ruby does an outstanding job coming back to his quarterback, Braxton Plunk. He doesn't wait for the ball, come back, make the catch, and then get upfield. That's a, that's a nice job, nice route by Wayne Ruby. Now, if you're Mount Union, down three scores, at what time do you have to start hurrying up pace on offense? I, I think right now, I, you know, I don't think you need to rush, but I think you need to speed it up a little bit, get a little tempo going. It's KJ Redmond on the ground, thrown down at the 45, picks up three. So I think you'll see the plays coming a little quicker. Coley's got more on Tyler Echeverry. Yeah, you know, it was at the end of the previous Mount Union drive when Tyler Echeverry came out. They were, I, I noticed trainers evaluating his right foot as well as his right knee. He's got a wrap around that knee right now. He just came back off the field after that first play of this drive. Uh, he looks to be a little hot one. We'll keep an eye on him. All right, good stuff. Airing it out downfield. Manley is open. Incomplete, but we do have a penalty flag down. Jerron Williams was the defender in coverage. This is the first penalty here in the second half coming up. Yeah, good Browns defense, number one. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Good route. Nice job by Manley getting behind the defender. You know, Williams catches up. He turns around late, but he contacts him before he does. That's why the official throws a flag right there. It's a good call. Gets him enough to interfere with him. And a much needed first down for Mount Union. KJ Redmond stays in the game and running back for Mount Union. It's the carry there. Fakes left, goes right. 
runs into a wall, picks up one. Well, you know, it was a defender in going to the ground, and I wasn't sure. And it's 99, Tyler Rich. And again, if it's, it's always a nine involved. If it's not Dan Gilroy, Tyler Rich has been in on a lot of plays. Second and nine, three wide receivers set, play clocks down to three. Plump. Jumps, passes, completes to his running back, Redmond. And Redmond will be stopped a yard short of the marker. Yeah, nice job by Plump, just to keep that play alive. You see him, a little bit of a jump pass there to KJ Redmond. Doesn't pick up the first down, but gets to third and one here. You know, we asked about Braxton Plunk to his coaches. What's his best throw? They said he can make every single throw, and I love the way he can improvise here on third and short. Redmond up the middle. First down, move the chains from out you. And it really wasn't Jeff Dart in our in our meeting. He was kind of soft-spoken. It was the defensive coordinator, uh, Daryl Ely, that said he can make all the throws because, you know, the one thing that people need to understand with both the both these teams do this they practice ones versus ones a lot and that makes you good right you get great defense great offense iron sharpens iron they go at it both teams do that Take the handoff Plunk. looking downfield flushed out to his right will find a receiver getting out of bounds is chase lawson <laughs> Big tight end, big tight end on a plant, City, Florida. A good catch, gets it upfield. Mount Union, their second possession here in this second half. Their second entrance into the red zone this half. Last drive, they went 18 plays, 70 yards, but did not finish it off. Lance Mitchell in the game, cutting, lowering the shoulder, and he will pick up the first down. And a good hard run by Mitchell there. Squaring those shoulders. Getting that first down. So Echeverry, the starter, is still on the sideline. Mitchell, the third back we've seen from Mount Union. Echeverry, number 25. First and 10 inside the red zone. Pump. Trying to scramble, will get out of bounds. And he's going to say pushed out at the 12. Dan Gilroy, the guy again, just so well, active. He's everywhere. You heard a ton of screaming coming from the North Central sideline. They believed he was held in the middle there. The flag doesn't come in, so there's no holding. And, and Plunk's able to escape, get to the outside, and get a nice pickup on first down. <laughs> Tenth play of this drive coming up for the Purple Raiders. On the ground, Mitchell. Pulled down inside the 10. And, and that's kind of where it hurts when you, when you don't have your first string, your second string back. And it's no disrespect to Lance Mitchell, but you know, the one and two running backs usually have a little more burst for you. And that was a good hole there. It looked like he might have been able to pop through that thing and score. Wasn't able to get through it. North Central comes up to make the tackle to get well, this third down territory. Yeah. This third and two for Mount Union. KJ Redmond back in the game at running back. Give it to Red. No keeper for Plunk. He's got room. Throws a defender. Touchdown. A nine yard touchdown run by Braxton Plunk and Mount Union's on the board. We saw Angelo Cusimano for North Central make a big fourth down tackle that time. He comes up at the goal line. Braxton Plunk has got a load of steam, and he was not going to be denied. Turns it up right here, and he says, I'm getting it in. Get out of my way. So a new kicker, Thomas Piccarillo. Come on for the extra point. Piccarillo bangs it through. 
Mount Union, their second possession of the half. They get on the board. Braxton Plunk, get off me, man. Welcome back. Our Week 15 Monday Night Football matchup has Aaron Rodgers and the Packers hosting Baker Mayfield and the Rams at Lambeau Field. Both teams, it's a virtual must-win playoff scenario. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. ESPN and ABC, ESPN Deportes and ESPN Plus. Don't forget, got the Manning cast is on at ESPN2. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6. I'm surprised how both those teams have struggled this year. But they have. Elliot Warner. Boot things away for Mount Union. Sacco on the return, and special teams coming up big for Mount Union. He won't even get it to the 20. It's a two-score game. North Central's up 21 to 7. 9:15 to play. National Championship on the line. Union is going to stage a comeback. The Purple Raiders will have to do it without defensive tackle Duke Hill. He was just carted into the locker room with that right foot injury. I can tell you, it took a while for the cart to come and meet him uh, in the back of the end zone. He was actually on crutches walking for uh, for half of the sideline in order to get to the cart itself. So uh, a serious injury, he is out for the rest of this. We'll see what the defense can do without him. All right, Cole, that is a tough scene for a senior in a national championship game, but you got to think about that young man's health. Hopefully and, gets and it's a big loss because he is very productive from that nose guard position. On the habit of front. But Central will start this drive on the ground with Ethan Greenfield. Picks up four. Yeah, and I mean, Mount Union, no secret what North Central wants to do here. Give the ball to Ethan Greenfield. Terrence Hill, their other back. There's nine minutes left in this game. We're up by two scores. They're going to just take their time and grind this clock and try to get first down. So if you're Mount Union, you got to overload the box here and you got to stop the run. So if you're North Central, at what point are you looking at the play clock to even snap the ball? Well, you know me. I, I, I say three seconds. You've got to let it go down to three. Luke Lanen's very smart, so he's going to be inside five every time. There he is right at three, snapping the ball. And he keeps it, but is chopped down. Jesse Vale, the tackle for loss, a loss of one. And that's the second time tonight we've seen uh, on zone read where Luke Lanin's pulled it. And Jesse Vale, number seven, has stayed home. Very disciplined, comes up and makes that tackle. Now it's a good opportunity here, third and seven for Mount Union to get the ball back. Got to get a stop here. On third downs tonight. North Central, one for seven. Eight minutes to play here in the Stag Bowl. And they were 57% on the year. First in the nation, third down conversions. Third and seven. North Central looking to throw. Lightning incomplete. Nick Rubble couldn't hold on to it. And Mount Union gets the stop. Yeah, Caleb, to tell him was there. Makes that break. Now throws a little behind. Even if he catches that that pass, Detella makes that tackle short of the first down. Excellent defense. Talked to his dad today, Caleb's dad, in the lobby. Said it's Detella. Made sure I knew how to say his last name. I said you got it, sir. Second three and out of the ball game for North Central. Tanner Ames is on the punt. Finley the deep man. Low end over end kick will check up. And Mountain Union, they are going to have great field position. This one marked down at midfield, a 28 yard punt. The Purple Raiders will get the ball down two scores when we come back. Score goal presented by Serve Pro. Florida's missing a lot of players, but. Transfer portal, opt outs, you name it. Best starting field position today for Mount Union. They come out throwing. That is complete to Jaden Manley as he gets out of bounds. And we've seen the Mount Union defense have some three and outs today. None more important than the one they just had. Not much time came off the clock. They get the three and out, get the ball back, as you said, in really good field position. Now that offense just needs to do what they did last time. 
go down the field, put it in, and make this a one-score game. Two wide receivers set, second down, faking the handoff, keeping it as plump. And he's dragged down in the backfield. Julian Bell, tackle for loss. I'm impressed with both defenses, how well the, the safeties come up and tackle and run support. You know, we, we saw last time out, Jesse Val, and then here we see Julian Bell, both of safeties. Done an exceptional job tonight. I mean, those are plays during the season against some of the teams they, they play. Those quarterbacks turn the corner and have big runs. Not tonight against these safeties. Third and eight. Plum completes again this time to Manley. Nice run after the catch. Will be forced out of bounds by Antoine Walker, but he picks up 20 and more importantly another first down. Great recognition by Plunk where to go. You know, North Central sends a blitz from the field side. Plunk releases it down to the boundary right away to Manley. And as you said, yards after the catch. Good job to break that tackle, stay in bounds. Mount Union is in good position here. Continues to tick as we approach six minutes to play. A full head of steam, KJ Redman only picked up one. Dan Gilroy again, another tackle. Bump this quarter. In the air, he is a perfect six for six, 52 yards. Second and nine, Plunk looking to throw again. Surrounded by red jerseys, and he's not going to get away. Dan Lester comes up with the sack, a loss of four. And Lester, we haven't called his name out a bunch tonight, but he's been doing yeoman's work on the inside. Coach said he's been a bright spot this year. He's very athletic. He's strong in the middle there. And Plunk gets forced up inside by Tyler Rich, and Dan Lester cleans him up. Mount Union's going to spread him out. Four wide receivers on third and 13. Plunk has room to run if he wants. Will throw. Tight window. And that's a catch. Wayne Ruby. Along that sideline will complete it. Picks up 11, brings up fourth down. Yeah, gets it to fourth and two. And you're going to go here if you're Jeff Dart. Boy, and it looked like he may have stepped out of bounds. Replay can stop this because that would be illegal touching. Because to me, he went out on his own. And I think replay is going to look at this. This is, we'll get another look at it ourselves. But illegal touching is essentially becomes an incomplete pass. Loss it down. This play is under further review. The ruling on the field is a catch. So the thing you got to look at, if the defender, Antoine Walker, 26, forced him out, then he's allowed to come back in, establish himself, and be the first person to touch the ball. I don't think he did. I think he stepped out on his own, came back in. Now, that's the end of the play. But if you... Now, there was a lot of contact correct, before but if the you, ball was thrown if going you, up the If field. you rewind it from the, this there view right go. here. So you're going to see a little contact here. Okay. Now he pushes off. Now he steps out. On his own, I believe he stepped out on his own after he kind of pushed off, which was fine. That's what receivers do. But I believe uh, this foul will be created by replay. It'll be an illegal touching. It'll be loss of down. It'll be fourth and 12. Now, with that much contact, is it an easy call to say he wasn't forced out, he went out on his own? So if he went out immediately after that contact, I would say yes, but because he kind of created the contact, then came back, and there was a pause, and then his left foot went out, to me, I think it's an easy call for the officials that he went out on his own and then came back in and was the first to touch it. But they're under the hood for a while. I am not the official in this game. Um, therefore, we'll see what they call. I just gave you my explanation, what I feel it should be. I've been wrong plenty of times. Just ask my wife. The referee tonight, David Herger. They've done an outstanding job, this crew here in this national championship game.
And the fact that he's writing stuff down tells me that they're reversing the call. Now, if they do, it would be fourth and 13. Yeah, it's going to be loss of down. After further review, the ruling is number six on the offense stepped out on his own and came back in bounds. It was first to touch the ball. The penalty has lost it down at the previous spot. Fourth down. So with that call, that is the first incomplete pass for Plunk this quarter. Incomplete pass, fourth and 13. This is the ball game, right? Yeah, and that's the correct call. And, and that's why in big games like this, and again, Division Three normally doesn't have replay. They have it here. It's an ACC replay crew up there. And, they're on the money. That, that's the right call. You know, it, it, yeah, I mean, you're going to go for it here. But with, with three timeouts left, I mean, your defense is still playing great. So even if you don't get it here, it's not necessarily over yet. But yeah, it's, it's tough sledding. On fourth downs tonight, Mount Union is one for three. We've seen Jaden Manley come up with a big play here this game. We know Wayne Ruby is a dependable receiver, number six and number 19. Those are the go-to guys for Mount Union. K.J. Redmond will be the guy in the backfield. Fourth and 13 for the Purple Raiders. Now you need to burn a timeout. Their first. So defensively, Jeff Dart saw what they were coming out with. He calls a timeout and will talk things over. This is a huge play in this game. 434 to play, fourth and 13. Come on back with us. Jeff Dart called the timeout. Clearly didn't like what he saw. Adjusted the play. Here we go. Fourth and 13. Well, pressure throwing over the middle. He's got it! What a catch! Wayne Ruby comes up in a big spot, picks up 29 inside the five. Mount Union is still alive. Yeah, go to your best receiver, throw it up, and say, go get it, big man. Wayne Ruby goes up between four defenders from North Central to make that catch. First down, Redmond. Stopped at the three, no gain. Shades of last week, right? When they needed that fourth down conversion. Plunk went to Ruby. Well, he goes there again to keep this game alive. How good has this wow. game been? One versus two, national championship on the line, and Mount Union won't go away. Under four minutes to play, Mount Union down by two scores. Second goal from the three, Redmond in the backfield. Throwing, end zone, touchdown, Mount Union! Look who it is, Wade Ruby to the rescue. For Ruby, his 30th reception touchdown of the season, most in any division. And Mount Union's down by one score. And I just love how quick Braxton Plunk delivers the football. Throws an absolute BB. And this little inside push and then out. Ooh. Little arrow route outside. Great route. That was dirty. By Wayne Ruby. And an excellent job by Plunk to put it, put it on him immediately. Thomas Picarillo for the extra point. Oh, let's go. A seven point game with 3.34 to play. We talked about this earlier. This is a position. North Central has not been in all year. They have not been in a one-score game with 3.34 left. Well, we'll see how they can answer. Look at that dart right there by Plunk. But as you said, that route was filthy, dirty. That was dirty. Yeah, that was a good route. Antoine Walker did not have a chance there. That's how you run a route right there. And Plunk puts it right on him. Get this thing back within one score. Mount Union has not attempted an onside kick this season. 
North Central has not had any attempted against them. So with 334, what's the play? You here? kick it off here because your defense has played great, okay? Um, they've gotten three and outs. You still have two timeouts. Yeah, you would have loved to kept that third, but obviously it paid dividends because Jeff Dart used it and they converted the fourth down. So with two timeouts left, I, I think you still kick this thing off and you say, hey, defense, go stop them again and get us the ball back and see if we can tie this thing up. If you're North Central, you run out the clock, you're national champions. Correct. Hey, you said it. This is We couldn't ask for anything better. One versus two, all right? They're going to kick this thing off, and you got the number one rush offense in the country versus the number one rush defense in the country. Let's see who's going to come out on top as national champions. And I love the fact that on national TV, everyone around the country can see the quality of football here in Division Three. These guys can play. It's great football, and we talked about it. You know, a lot of these players, you know, they could go to some FCSs and they could walk on at some Division One programs, but they want to win championships. They want to come to great Division Three programs, and both these programs are great. So North Central is setting up like they're expecting an onside kick. Terrence Hill is the deep man. Elliot Warner set to kick it away. And they do onside kick it. But North Central will fall on it. Yeah, I mean, I, it's just me. Listen, I'm not the coach, but I just think with two timeouts, your defenses show that you, you've gotten three and outs before. You go ahead and kick it long. They took a shot with the onside kick. Zach Orr showing the dependable hands will fall on top of this one. You don't like that decision. Well, I just think with two timeouts, because your defense has gotten three and outs tonight, it's not like they haven't, um, you know, that it, kicking it off long. But now, you know, they, they recover the onside kick. There's North Central. Now they have the ball on your side of the 50. And North Central's credit, they were ready yes. for the well, they were, onside kick. Yeah. On the ground, we're going to see a steady diet of Ethan Greenfield here. Caitlin to tell him what the tackle. And this defense knows they got to get the ball back. NCAA championship coverage continues tomorrow with Division II football championship game right at 1 p.m. on ESPNU. Now, for more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Uh, Mason McMillan as well. For Mount Union was in on that play. Very active linebacker. You know, whatever happens here, how about the heart of this Mount Union team coming out of a locker? They look completely different. Agree. Second and 11. Greenfield picks up one. That's to tell him again on the stop. Third down. Look at the fans, man. They're going crazy. Timeout. And see, to me, this even fuels me more why you would have should have kicked the ball off long, right? Because it looks like you're going to get a three and out, but now when they punt it, you're going to have to go a long way. Now, last week, Mount Union, they also had to come from behind in a semifinal game. It was a key fourth down conversion against Wolfberg. They get it done. Yeah, they went a long way. Yep. Similar time to what's left in this game, where they still have to get the ball back here, and Echeverry finished it off with the touchdown run. And in that possession right there, there was a fourth down conversion between Plunk and Ruby, like we saw in that last possession, that kept it alive. So we'll see if the defense can get the stop here. You got one timeout left, so ideally you stop them on a run play, you burn that last time out, you force them to punt. You're going to have about two minutes and 30 seconds left to go down the field and try to tie this thing up. You know, as good as this North Central offense has been, they have not converted a third down since the first drive of the game. Since they're 0 for 6, here it is. Running as the quarterback. Lanin has an alley. Across the 20, still on his feet. Inside the 10, chopped down at the 5. Luke Lanin coming up with the play of the game. A 42-yard pickup. And they tried that play a couple times tonight, but the safeties for Mount Union had great discipline. They were there. Not that time. Great blocking on the outside as well. You're going to see in the greenfield, you pull it in and look at excellent job. Great blocking by the tight end. Alec Wolf, 16. Give him credit. Great job. And then the speed of Luke Lanin to get it to the outside. 
And for all intents and purposes, this game's over. Lanin averaging almost 10 yards a carry, 10 rushes, 98 yards. That was his longest. Now they hand off to Mr. Dependable, Greenfield. He will be actually stopped for a loss of one. You know, you asked Coach Brad Spencer yesterday. You said, you haven't really played in a close game yeah. as Mount Union calls a timeout. Are you worried about close games? And his response, he said, we prepare every week like we're getting ready to play Mount Union. And, and that third down there, I mean, that's a clutch play under pressure that they haven't dealt with all year. And Lanin looked pretty good right there as they picked it up. And Mount Union burns their last time out. And, you know, one thing about this North Central team that, that stood out to me this year, and this has been a really clean game, and we talked about this at halftime. North Central plus 26 in turnover margin this year. That means they're protecting the football and they're taking it away from their opponents. That's phenomenal. I mean, Mount Union's plus 13 on the year, which is great, but plus 26 for North Central. Uh, you're going to win a lot of games when your turnover margin's like that. And let's, let's rewind it back to Coley when he's talked in the, really the open talked about how Brad Spencer feels like we got embarrassed last year on national TV we want revenge we want to get the title back we don't care who we're playing we want to be back on top and what a performance tonight by the Cardinals yeah no doubt about it and, it, and it's and it's a tough game listen we know what kind of program Mount Union was so although uh, the score they were down to halftime we knew they were going to come out and fight and they have been a, a better and different team here in the second half second and goal from the six Laney, hand off greenfield dragged down marked down at the three jacob scott with the stop a pickup of three of course no timeout so this clock will keep on running here Now, if you're Mount Union, do you almost let them score here? Well, no, because you're, you're down two scores, you know? If it, if it was, you know, what are you going to do? Um, if it was, you know, within a score, yeah, but not here. No timeouts. Mount Union will just look at the clock tick down. Third and goal, 130 to play. End zone! Waiting for the signal. They say incomplete. North Central celebrating, but that's no touchdown. They all think it's a touchdown, but the official said incomplete. We'll take a look at it here. D'Angelo Hardy, did he get a foot in bounds as he was trying to get possession of the ball? So, I mean, that right foot comes down in. I mean, replay's definitely going to look at this. That'll be interesting because it looked like from that one, he possessed it, controlled it, foot was in with possession, touchdown. But then when you look at it the other way, did he? Did the ball move and then that other foot come out of bounds? That's what replay's going to have to look at. So D'Angelo Hardy just saw the replay. He thinks it's a touchdown. It was ruled incomplete yeah. on the field. I mean, he definitely caught the ball. The question is, did, did he move it before that other foot came down? Now, one look I got at, got looked at, which they did, I believe he possessed the ball with a foot in, but we'll see. They certainly think he was in. So let's take a look at it here. He goes up. He's got it. But does he have possession yeah, there? That's to, the question. To me, I think he does. It didn't look like it didn't look like the ball moved. After yeah. further review, number six completed the catch and bounds, touchdown. Yeah, because the ball never moved. Now he he moved it, but the, you know what I mean from his right hand. But it, it never moved. He had possession of it. That's the key. Possession with a foot down, touchdown. That, that's the right call. Replay has been spot on today. Very good tonight. Lane, and that was his first completed pass this half as Reigns will come on for the extra point.
kick is up and good. Back to two scores. Let's take another look. And it surprised me that they threw it here, but they got a matchup they liked. Good adjustment. It's the right call. He possessed the ball, got that foot in. It's almost time to celebrate. Now, we've seen crazier things happen. We have, so that's why I said it's play. almost time to now celebrate. Mount Union will get the ball back. If they can score quick, this game's not over. And that's why I'm, I'm almost, well, listen, they, they want to score. I mean, you're almost to the point where on third down, almost run it and just, you know, don't score. And you get it down to about 30 seconds left in the game, and then you got to run it again, and then hopefully you score then. But if you don't score, you're going to give them the ball back probably within 20, 25 seconds. But you're still only up by a score, so. But it's all a moot point because they scored the touchdown there. Minute 24 left in this thing. Great appearance for North Central. Great. Push it down. Now the Union, they'll get the ball at the 40. Let's take a look back to 2019, the first ever national championship game appearance for North Central, taking on Wisconsin Whitewater. Then sophomore Ethan Greenfield. He ran for 138 yards, three touchdowns on 27 carries, and North Central just ran away with the championship, 41 to 14, the first title in school history. And remember, Brad Spencer was the offensive coordinator for that team. Now he's the head coach, so he'd be looking at his first national championship as the head man. Well, dump off to KJ Redman. Edgman ain't making a move, does not get to the first down, a pickup of nine, so the clock continues to run. Yeah, so you're Shane Deer, the defensive coordinator. You give him all that underneath, just come up and make the tackle. Second and one, quick snap, plump. Pressure completes over the middle, back to Redmond, spins down at the 45. It will stop it momentarily, but as soon as they spot it, that clock will run again. Long spikes it, stops the clock. Yeah, so defensively here, you just you just can't, as you talked about, you can't give a quick score, big strike, anything over the top. You got everyone back. Give them the underneath stuff. Invite that underneath stuff. Just come up and tackle. 44 seconds to play. Second and 10. Plum will air it out. Deep pass. It is caught. A pickup at 40 yards to Wayne Ruby. Yeah, I mean, you're Antoine Walker. You're in great position. You just got to make the play, but Wayne Ruby just outplayed you. Again, he's a great receiver. Makes the catch. Hey, this game ain't over yet. Not yet. No, it's not. Wayne Ruby is so aggressive when that ball is in the air. Redmond, the man in the backfield, on first and goal. Looking to throw, end zone, touchdown, Mount Union! Edwin Reed with the touchdown catch, and it's back to a one-score game. The one thing you can't do, North Central, is give up an over-the-top play, and they did it. Dwayne Ruby puts him in great position, and Plunk makes him pay as he gets it to Edwin Reed for the touchdown, and that is a quick score, and as you said, partner, it's not quite over yet. For Reed, that was his first catch today. As Picarillo will try to make this a seven point game. And that click, kick is tipped, but it still goes through. Picarillo. Well, we just saw one onside kick. We're about to see another one. So it'll be interesting if they have a, a different onside kick in their repertoire, because that was the, the onside kick straight ahead where the kicker runs up and tries to get it. This is why you practice special teams. Yeah, it is. 
And did anyone think Mount Union was just going to go away quietly, even though they were down two scores with a minute left? No chance. Yeah. This team has fought all year long. A perfect 14-0. Came from behind in the semifinal last week. I mean, this was the end of the regular season. Take a look at this. November 12th, in the snow. Dial up the Hail Mary play. Braxton Plunk with the big throw. A little blink off the head, and Wayne Ruby says, I'll take that, thank you very much. And again, so this is a Mount Union team that's been in these situations. And that's why I asked Brad Spencer that question, because North Central has it. This is a team that's won by an average, again, of 48 and a half points per game. They haven't been in these situations where they have to get onside kicks and, you know, you can't give up big chunk plays at the end of the game when you just got to knock it down. And here we are, one score game, 30 seconds left, and another onside kick. Thomas Piccarillo will attempt the onside kick from Mount Union. Central has it. D'Angelo Hardy will walk it off the field. And that'll do it. Out of all the big catches D'Angelo Hardy has made in his career, that might be the biggest one right there. Catching the kick. I mean, it was a good attempt, right? Yeah. You get the big hop, Piccarillo executed the North Central with the good hands. Yes. Yeah. To answer my question, yes, they had a couple of different onside kicks in the repertoire because that's what they went for the cross field. Big hop, they got it, but excellent job by D'Angelo Hardy to come up with that onside kick. And this is the most favorite play in football. We used to call this I Spy Victory. Number five. Five-yard penalty, first down. And they'll gladly take that delay game. <laughs> no rush out to the field. One knee, and this game's over. So North they, Central, they called this the revenge tour. Yeah, and, and they did it. And listen, and it was a tight game. We talked about it. haven't been in tight games this year. They fought hard, fought to the end, and closed it out. Luke Lanin takes a knee. 20 seconds run off. Mountain Union with no timeouts. They can't stop the clock. And how about some redemption for Luke Lanin, who had three interceptions in this game last year? Not tonight. Five seconds to play. North Central on the field. They've got the trophy. And that'll do it. North Central Cardinals back on top. Your Division Three National Champions. Send it down to Coley with the game-winning coach. Uh, the first question is, what does this feel like for you? I mean, it's unbelievable. Look at it. I'm so proud of our staff and our players and just everything that they've given. Um, First-year head coach, I just didn't want to screw it up. These guys are so good that I couldn't mess it up, but uh, just blessed to be in this position. And good Lord kept me here, and things have paid off. And so proud of our players and our seniors for fighting. I mean, it's a heck of a football. We had to be two just such good football teams here the last two weeks. And so for our guys to get amped up for a second week in a row on a short week and to finish like this, they have to play four quarters and to finish when it's hard. It's just what our senior group's about. They've totally risen our standard. They've risen our expectations. We owe them everything. I owe them everything. I know I'll never forget this group. I love them all. You know, we called this the revenge tour for you guys, the way you wanted to prove a point in this game compared to what uh, what you showed last year. What did this team show tonight? They showed moxie. They showed they're tough. They showed they're gritty. And that's what we pride ourselves on is, is tough kids that are gritty and they're going to fight. That's why you do the morning workouts. That's why you roll around in the sand. That's, that's why you get up early and carry heavy things and lift heavy things. And 
these guys just showed they're willing to do it for an entire season for 15 weeks and it's a battle the pinnacle of division three football in Mount Union right down to the wire and have to use every facet to have to get on sides you know all three phases had to work and they did um, just shows a lot of our team and like I said I have to thank our fifth year seniors for what they did and for everything that they've given to us and to me and my family last question for second national title for this program first time since 2019 what does this prove that you all are building here we're trying to build to be the best I mean that's that's what we want that's the goal is down the road to be known as the best and you can only do that by being the best and to take down Mount Union here we feel like we're taking steps in the right direction but I mean, our senior group since they came in in 2018 have just done so much for us, so much for our coaches and the uh, the school. Uh, to be able to be here and watch these guys celebrate means everything. Go celebrate, Coach. Thanks very much.